Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klopper and I'm from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent. In this video clip I would like to discuss with you how we can determine the dissociation constant of an uncompetitive inhibitor. Now let's write down our general scheme when we deal with inhibitors. So first of all we've got enzyme plus substrate and this gives us an enzyme substrate complex and this enzyme substrate complex then dissociates into the free enzyme again and the product and the enzyme can start a new cycle and uh, bind a new substrate. Now an uncompetitive inhibitor we said interacts exclusively with the enzyme substrate complex. So we have uncompetitive inhibitor like that and it interacts in a reversible way with the enzyme substrate complex. Note an uncompetitive inhibitor cannot interact with a free enzyme. It has to have the enzyme substrate complex and when it interacts it forms an enzyme substrate inhibitor complex and we can define a dissociation constant for that so I call it KIU we can write KIU is defined as the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex times the concentration of the uncompetitive inhibitor divided by the concentration of the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. And what we see uh, very easily is that if KIU is very small, so KIU is very small, then we would have to have the concentration of the complex very high. So that would mean that if KIU is small, the equilibrium lies very much on this side here. Or in other words, the inhibitor binds very strongly to the ES complex. So if we say if KIU is small, inhibitor binds very strongly. So inhibitor binds strongly to ES complex. And that is what we want from a good inhibitor. The stronger the inhibitor binds, the better the inhibitor is. And in order to be a strong inhibitor, KIU must be very small. So uh, how can we determine uh, this experimentally? First of all, before we discuss that, let's simply write down what we know about uh, K, uh, our, our uncompetitive inhibitor. So without an inhibitor, we have our three parameters, Vmax, that tells us how the enzyme behaves at very high substrate concentration, Km, this tells us about the affinity of the enzyme, and we've got Vmax apparent, oh sorry, not apparent in this case, Vmax over Km, and this tells us how the enzyme behaves at very low substrate concentrations. Now, when we add a competitive inhibitor, we find that our Vmax, and in this case we call it Vmax apparent, to indicate that there is an inhibitor, we find that Vmax apparent goes down. Km apparent also goes down and Vmax apparent over Km apparent. That stays the same as the original Vmax over Km. So what we can do actually is we can use different inhibitor concentrations, and I abbreviate that like that, and measure the corresponding Vmax apparent. So let me quickly write that down.
the experimental approach would be use different inhibitor concentrations and determine corresponding Vmax apparent. So what we get again is probably a nice table. So we've got our inhibitor concentration again my, maybe in micromolar and we measure Vmax apparent the corresponding one. So without inhibitor of course that would be our original Vmax and we might get this, so for example, we measure that in millimolar per minute or something like that. So we might get, say, 100 millimolar per minute, 2 micromolar, 4, 6. So we probably get 80, 60, 40, something like that. And what we see is that Vmax uh, apparent goes down the more inhibitor we uh, add to our reaction. Now, how can we determine the dissociation constant in this case? Well, what we use is a so-called secondary plot, or that's also called Dixon plot. And what we do is we plot on the x-axis, we plot our inhibitor concentration. Again in micromolar and on the y-axis now again we do something very funny we actually do not plot Vmax up we plot the inverse we plot 1 over Vmax up and uh, previously I showed you that we determine Vmax up here but in fact, we plot 1 over Vmax. The reason for that is that the maths is a little bit hairy, and I will explain that in another video. But uh, we just have to remember, for a Dixon plot, for an uncompetitive inhibitor, we plot inhibitor concentration versus 1 over Vmax up. And what we get is a straight line. We can extend this straight line into the negative range, and we get this point here, this intercept, with the inhibitor axis. And this point actually gives us minus, I should write this here, minus KIU. That gives us actually our dissociation constant. Now, we need to make a few statements about KIU. So KIU is always larger than zero. It's always positive because a negative dissociation constant would not make any sense. And the unit for KIU, so unit KIU, is the same as the unit for the inhibitor, so it would be concentration. In this case, it would be micromolar. So with uh, that uh, approach we can very easily determine what our dissociation constant for the inhibitor is. And last but not least I would like to introduce you to the concept of the binding constant. So binding constant. And the binding constant, usually abbreviated as KBIU, <coughs> is nothing else but the inverse of the dissociation constant. So it would be 1 over KIU. And again, the units for that, um, for the binding constants, would be 1 over the unit for KIU. So it would be 1 over concentration. 
Usually we don't bother uh, very much with uh, the binding constant because we get all the data from KIU. So let me quickly summarize that. So we said that um, we have our dissociation constant KIU is defined as the dissociation constant between enzyme substrate and the uncompetitive inhibitor divided by enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. And we said that the smaller KIU, the better the inhibitor binds the IU binds to the enzyme substrate complex. So small KIU indicates a very strong inhibitor. We said KIU is always positive and we find KIU if we plot in a Dixon plot inhibitor concentration versus 1 over Vmax up that's very important that it is 1 over Vmax we get a straight line like that and this point here gives us minus KIU and the concentration and, and the unit for KIU is concentration. So I hope this uh, makes sense to you and uh, thank you very much for watching.